30th annual Red Earth Festival coming up this weekend, Friday through Sunday. It's at the Cox Convention Center, directly across the street from where we are. We're at the Oklahoman here at the corner of Sheridan and Robinson. I'm Dave Morris, joined by a pair of Eric's, Eric Aish. You are the Deputy Director, Director of Communications with Red Earth. That's right. Thank you for coming in. Yeah. And Eric Tippaconic. That's correct. It's probably sort of correct, but a Comanche <laughs> artist, very nice to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. It's our pleasure. We're happy. I'll throw it your way first. Set us up. What is Red Earth? Well, it's, this will be our 30th annual Red Earth. It's a, the world's largest Native American cultural festival, and we're, this year we're going to be featuring over 140 artists from throughout the country. Eric's joining us from California. Um, we'll have a juried art market with artists selling their artwork to the public. Um, we'll kick it off Friday morning with a parade. And the parade's a big deal. It goes around the Myriad Botanical yeah. Gardens. You're looking at some footage, I believe, from last year's yeah, parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we expect, a, you know, 8,000 people or so to, to witness it. Should we'll, have some great weather this week. Yeah. Too. Maybe we'll, a little warm. We've had to cancel it because I saw lightning strike one time. The Devon Tower is 730 in the morning, standing in the rain. Like, go ahead and call us off. We're not going to have this parade this year. <laughs> so, but, you know, we have, we have a tribal leaders, tribal princesses. We've got youth groups, we've got veterans organizations, And the parade is guards. free, it's just for the community to come yes, out. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you what, this, the entire Shiner Arapaho Nation, they, they have an official holiday and encourage all their, their employees to come to Red Earth and be in the parade. It's huge. We've got people from all over the state coming and we see so, much so many beautiful people in beautiful regalia. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a great, unique parade. I mean, no other city has a parade like that. So it kicks off with that parade on Friday morning, um, or, or Friday 10 a.m. Right. Uh, Friday morning. And Eric, he mentioned this was uh, last year was the first time you participated, that's and you correct. were one of the featured artists, right? Yes, that's correct. In fact, we're looking at some artwork yeah. uh, that you created last year, right? Yeah, this is the original War Admiral, uh, and this was the uh, piece that they featured in their advertising campaign. Um, they, they graciously put it on billboards all across Oklahoma City and their posters and t-shirts and, and, and I was you know, very humbled to get that honor. It was a, a, an incredible honor for myself and a, a great boost for my, for my career actually. Well he's being quite honest. He has a PhD. He's currently a professor at Cal State Fullerton of course in California. Uh, your father is from is Comanche from the Lawton area. Is That's that correct. correct. What, are, what are your Oklahoma connections? Well my father is from uh, not any, not even a town. He's, he's, their their land is one of the original allotments that they received back in 19, um, beginning in 1901 when they started to allot the Comanche lands, and so uh, they just call it the farm. But it's near Cash, okay. uh, in Southwest Oklahoma. Uh, my father is a full blood Comanche, um, and my mother is from Copenhagen, Denmark. And so my connection, of course, to Oklahoma, is obviously through my father's side of the family. I got to ask real fast, how did they meet? My dad was serving in the U.S. Navy, okay. and he was on a destroyer called the USS Healy, and they were docked in Copenhagen uh, for a week. And my mother was 17 years old. Coming home from her uh, first job, she had already completed high school at that point. And her parents didn't warn her about sailors? Oh, uh, appar <laughs> apparently not. But she was coming home on her bicycle, and my father was walking along the harbor called Long Alinea, the Long Harbor in Copenhagen. Or Copenhagen. And she apparently struck him on her bicycle. And this, uh, what followed was a conversation apparently and a few dates. And my father went back out to sea. They wrote back and forth for 11 months. Literally writing letters, right? No Facebook, no, none of that. No, no, none of that. Literally writing letters every day. And, and it was, it's funny because it took a while for them to get there. And so <laughs> my mother was worried that, oh, this guy just came it's in. It's not going to respond. Call me. It's been a week or two. But he arranged to be discharged in Copenhagen. He married her there and then brought her over to the United States, so her entire family still in Denmark. What got you into art? My mother, actually. It's funny that you uh, asked how they met because um, I was an oops child, I guess. I was not uh, intended, and so um, I'm a lot younger than my brothers and sisters, and I have a large family. And, and my mother used to take me around and visit her friends and to keep me busy. She learned very quickly that all she had to do was give me a, a drawing pad and some, some markers. And I would draw everything that I, that I could see, and, and I, would, I was constantly drawing. And then eventually that, you know, I graduated into painting, and, and I just fell in love with the whole process. Some of your artwork is right over here on our psych wall. What are we looking at over here? Uh, you're looking at um, some recent pieces, actually. Uh, the tall vertical piece is called Shining Star. 
Um, and, and that's a Comanche warrior on horseback, of course. I do a lot of uh, Comanche warriors on horseback. Uh, you're looking at Namakutsu, it's a buffalo uh, down below. A couple of untitled uh, horses that go together. And you're looking at uh, an Apache, a San Carlos Apache crown dancer uh, on top. And the title of that one is Indigenous Snake Cross and Crown. And it, I, I kind of get that name from a, a popular indie rock group. I like to give my uh, paintings fun titles. Um, but I lived in San Carlos uh, for, for a few years growing up, and I saw Apache Crown Dancers quite often. Uh, my father worked for the government, and so we, we moved all over the United States and lived on different reservations. Eric, I'll bring you back in at this yeah. point, segueing out of this artwork. This is an example of some of the art we'll see this weekend, correct? You bet. You bet. You know, uh, Red Earth is a unique art festival. Um, we were talking about this earlier. Sometimes it's hard to describe Oklahoma Indian art because people kind of mm -hmm. get a glazed look on their face. Hmm. It's easy to describe New Mexico or Arizona Indian art. You think of beautiful turquoise jewelry and you think of beautiful black pottery. And then you think Oklahoma Indian art. And the, again, you get that glazed look. Well, I have an opinion, but a theory, but I think it's probably pretty true. You know, all, all, we have 39 tribes in Oklahoma, but only three of them are indigenous to the state. And all the others were removed here from their homelands. So each tribe in Oklahoma works really hard to keep their traditions alive. So we have artists like, like Eric that paint in the Comanche way, and a lot of Comanche horses, and they're known for Comanche horsemen. Absolutely. Um, but we also have the Seminole that come from the Florida Everglades, and they do this Florida in the Seminole patchwork, or Potawatomis that are from the Great Lakes region, and they're influenced by, mm -hmm. you know, the rivers and the lakes and the waters. And so, and then we got the Plains tribes with the beadwork. So, that's what you'll see when you come to Red Earth. You'll see a huge variety of, of arts, artistic styles. And uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a jury art market. So each person that is, is representative in, in our show had to meet our qualifications to be accepted into the show. And you know, sadly, there's people that apply that don't get in. And, but there are those that have, have won awards at Red Earth that it took them two or three tries to get in. But once they finally get in, they win, you know. So we've got excellent artwork at the Red Earth Festival. Add some value to it. We mentioned the parade is 10 a.m. Friday. That afternoon, on Friday afternoon, something special uh, involving an eagle. Yeah. Well, we've got a kid zone area for all the children that come, and we've been working with the Citizen Potawatomi Nation out of, out of Shawnee, and they have an eagle aviary there, and uh, they take in injured eagles and rehabilitate them to release into the wild. And, but unfortunately, some of them will never be able to be released because of their injuries, and they live there for the rest of their lives and some of them could live to be 40 years old and so what they do is they use their eagles to educate the public about wildlife but also about native culture and uh, so they're going to be on on friday more friday from noon to three okay. they'll be in the kids zone area with a, a golden eagle and the children will be able to see it live in person it'll be perched on her arm and she'll be yeah. talking with a seven foot wingspan and it's not going to be in a cage it'll be right there That's like a, a fantastic falcon. opportunity yeah it'll be awesome so we have hands-on children's activities. You know, Red Earth is a ticketed event. It's $11 for adults, but all children under 18 are free. So it's a great opportunity to bring kids down to, to not only see the art and the kids' activities, but we have dance throughout the day, too. Let's move on to two other things we want to highlight, because Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. is Sunrise Breakfast. Right, right. Um, this is something new that we're doing. It's a, t a separately ticketed event. It happens prior to the opening of festival, it's at 8.30 a.m. and we'll be featuring Scott Hale and he is a, he's a, a renowned uh, appraiser. He's out of Santa Fe and he will be speaking on the art of collecting Native American jewelry. And uh, we, were, we were talking the other day and he told, I think this is fascinating, that turquoise is, is more rare than diamonds. And uh, a lot of the turquoise that people see isn't, might not really be what you think it is. And so that's one of the things you'll be able to learn. Um, people can go on our website, redearth.org, and, and uh, can register to attend that event. We still have a few spaces open for that Saturday morning breakfast. Then on Sunday, an Ask the Expert session. What's that all about? Well, you, I think we're all familiar with the Antiques Roadshow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing a takeoff of that. And uh, I know a lot of folks, and I'm sure you do too, that 
Um, they have inherited things from their grandparents or a neighbor or picked something up at a garage sale. Is it valuable? Is it not They valuable? think it's Indian or is it not and is it real? And so with your paid admission, we're, we're going to invite people to bring up to three items and we'll have experts there in beadwork and pottery and painting and sculpture and painting and jewelry and they will evaluate it for you. We are not, we're not going to give appraisals, sure. but we're going to let you know this is something you might want to take real good care of, or this is something that you can have in your next garage sale. A thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> a thumbs up or a thumbs down, yeah. All right, the Red Earth Festival, Friday through Sunday at the Cost Convention Center. One last thing with you, Mr. Eric here. Um, what are you bringing to the show? I'm bringing about 30 original okay. uh, pieces, all acrylic on canvas, uh, some, uh, a little bit of, of everything. Um, uh, much of my subject matter, of course, is, is uh, from my own tribe, Comanche tribe. Uh, but uh, I, I bring in things that I've witnessed and in, 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 uh, growing up. And so I'll bring some San Carlos Apaches and I'll bring a lot of horses and buffaloes. And, and I'll have about uh, 30 pieces ranging in size from 5 feet uh, by 4 feet like this one was last year to uh, some pieces as, as small as you know 2 by 2 inches. So a great range of, of size and, and variety of subject matter as well. Fantastic. You can catch his artwork again at the Red Earth Festival this weekend, Friday through Sunday at the Cox Convention Center. Uh, and as you mentioned, redearth.org. Is that the correct, That's right. correct website? Gentlemen, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having Best me. Best of luck. Appreciate Have fun it, this weekend. All right. Thank you.